I think there's a pretty strong possibility that Kevin Harlan may be the best announcer of all time. <laughs> and if you were watching Monday Night Football last night, you know exactly what the hell I'm talking about. So, we're going to be talking about that today. What's going on, everybody? Your host, Lovely Cheese Pizza here. Welcome back to another edition of Sports Sunday, where we talk about sports life and everything in between. I know this is going to seem kind of weird to you guys, because it is indeed not a Sunday, like the name of this unit would imply. It is 11.54 a.m. on Tuesday morning. But I figured there's no way that I could let this topic sit all the way until Sunday night where I would normally do one of these videos. This shit was going to happen right now because what took place on Monday Night Football last night might be one of the single greatest moments in the history of, of sports radio play-by-play. -play. It was absolutely brilliant. <laughs> and it was, it was yet again another classic example of why I feel like sports radio broadcasting is so much better than TV. Because, and don't get me wrong, there, there, have, been, there have been hundreds, thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of, of, in, of classic, legendary, fantastic, you know, calls of, of various things on, on sports, you know, TV broadcasts. But there's something so much more charming about sports radio where even on neutral networks like ESPN where they, where they specifically tell you, hey, you know, try and, you know, try and keep it neutral, don't, you know, don't show any bias towards, you know, any certain team, which I feel like in, in that moment, like, guys, while trying to stay neutral, will kind of get too monotone, and, like, they won't, it'll sound like they're not even excited about it at all. Like, they just, like, there's, like, no emotion in there whatsoever. And I think that's where TV broadcasts can get kind of, kind of lost in that. Of which, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that at some point, but... I feel like on sports radio, like guys will kind of uncork it a little bit, you know. They'll 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 have more fun with it, and they'll they'll have some emotion, and they'll they'll be, you know, they'll be more interested in it generally. Like that's kind of the experience that I that I've had with a lot of sports radio broadcasts of games. That it's just more fun to listen to because the guys get into it more, and uh, and so that's what that is. So. Kevin Harlan, one of the one of the great announcers of our time. I don't think that there's any question in that. I, I think that's a pretty generally accepted fact throughout the populace. Like if you were to if you were to create an extended like an extended um, Mount Rushmore of of all the great announcers of our time, and you're gonna have guys in there like Vin Scully, which is amazing that that guy is still doing announcing despite the fact that he's like 179 years old. Like he's nearing the area where he's gonna be on his second Smucker's jar if he's not careful. <laughs> and uh, and fucking uh, Wilford Scott is gonna be able to give him another one because that guy is also like 200 years old. But that's besides the point. You got then you got guys like Al Michaels. Well, even if you only you know count him for doing the Miracle on Ice thing, that's still like one of the greatest calls there is. So you can put him up there for that. You got guys like Marv Albert, and uh, you've got guys like Doc Emmerich for uh, for NHL, and uh, you've got guys like Vern Lundquist, and uh, and you know you, it, maybe you could throw an argument in there for like Brent Musburger. He's been part of some great ones too, even though. He's not necessarily my favorite, but... And even like Joe Buck, no matter what you feel about Joe Buck, whether you love him or you hate him, that guy is synonymous with, with World Series baseball. And even baseball in general. Uh, I, I know he does football a lot of the time, and, and I think he's pretty good there too, but I think, he, I think he's kind of... I think he's kind of the big baseball guy, really. And so whether you like him or you don't, I think that he's... He's going to go down as one of the greats. That, that's just what it is. Kevin Harlan is also in that conversation. Like, he generally, more often than not, is doing basketball more often than anything else. He's usually on TNT or ESPN. Every once in a while during March Madness, he'll, he'll, get, on some, uh, he'll get on some calls for those. Um, and every once in a while, he'll also get thrown in the fray on uh, ESPN Radio to do simulcast there. And uh, so, last night... He had the divine pleasure of being thrown on to just the just the scalding the scalding bum barrel fire that was the uh, the 49ers and Rams game that that horrendous display <laughs> probably the most boring 28 nothing blowout that I think I've ever seen in my life and like I feel like I I feel bad for announcers in games like that that better drop that's dropping. 
I feel I feel bad for announcers in games like that where it's it's seemingly impossible to stay engaged because there's nothing exciting going on. They're just like, oh, he hands the ball off again. He gets two yards. I'm going to take this needle that's in the drawer and I'm going to shove it straight through my retina and go all the way through my brain and kill me because that would probably be more exciting than what's going on right now. But there was there was a window of about one minute and fourteen seconds that was easily the most exciting moment of that entire game. And it was fantastic, because I guarantee you on the TV broadcast side of it, it was nowhere near as exciting. Because and, and I'm gonna try I won't spoil it too much. I'll give you a general idea, but I actually brought the audio clip along with me, because there's no way that I could do this moment justice just by trying to replicate it on my own. You gotta hear it straight from the horse's mouth. But basically what happened is, during the fourth quarter of this game, uh, the game was already well out of hand at that point. I think it was 21 nothing already. And uh, there was a moment where a fan came out on the field. And generally, when these moments happen, especially the guys on TV broadcast, they'll just kind of dismiss it. They'll be like, oh, well, it looks like there's a fan on the field and the cameras won't follow him. They just, they just refuse to even acknowledge that, it, that it's happening. It's like, oh, it looks like there's a fan on the field. It looks like the security guards are going to chase him down and they're going to get him out of here as quickly as possible. What a, what an idiot. You know, what a, just, it just, it just makes me sick when, when fans do that. They're just, they're just slowing down the game and they're ruining the excitement for everybody else. And I just think that's terrible. You see that, you see that happen on TV broadcasts way too much. Like, every once in a while, you'll, you'll, you'll have a moment where a guy, like, tries to kind of see the silver lining in it, but even then, it's still just kind of, eh, whatever. But Kevin Harlan, bless his, his awesome soul, in a, in a game where he and, and Kurt Warner were just bored out of their fucking minds, he decided, you know what, instead of just dismissing this thing, I'm gonna have some fun with it. And so, for the next minute and 14 seconds, just sit back and listen to the amazingness that's not even a word, that was this moment. I, there's a possibility I may get hit with a copyright strike on this, I really hope not. I figure I'm a small enough channel, maybe nobody will even notice. If anything, maybe it'll just be like a third party, you know, acknowledgement notice that I'll end up getting. But get a, get a load of this, it is just amazing. Third and four, looks into the nickel of San Francisco in the secondary. Hey, somebody has run out on the field. Some goofball in a hat. And a red shirt. Now he takes off the shirt. He's running down the middle by the 50. He's at the 30. He's bare-chested and banging his chest. Now he runs the opposite way. He runs at the 50. He runs at the 40. The guy is drunk. But there he goes. The 20. They're chasing him. They're not going to get him. Waving his arms. Bare-chested. Somebody stop Look that out. man. Here comes the blue coat. Oh, Kevin. they got him. Here comes They're coming the blue from the coat. left. Oh, they tackle him at the 40-yard line. Oh, that was the most exciting thing to happen tonight. I tell you what, that was a great call on your part. <laughs> that was a great call. <laughs> All right, I'm ready for the last 11:31 now, Kevin. Let's go. Look at the police. They've surrounded this man like he is, <laughs> like he, like he's just robbed a bank. I tell you what, he got a whole lap in he did, before yes. they got him. I mean, that was that was pretty good. I expected him to go down much sooner. Yeah. But uh, I hope it was worth it, my friend, because you've got a night in the clink coming up. <laughs> I mean, was that not incredible or what? <laughs> it's just like the greatest thing. The dude had the, the dude had so much fun with it. I don't think I've ever I've ever heard a situation where where a fan came out onto the field and the guy actually does full on play by play of what's going on. And I think my I think my favorite part of the whole thing <laughs> was the part where he's like he's like, he's he's going back to the 40. The guy is drunk, but there he goes. <laughs> I love that part of it. That part was fantastic. And then he's like, all the guards are surrounding him like like the guy robbed a bank or something. I hope it was worth it, because you're gonna be spending a night in the clink! <laughs> Kevin Harlan's amazing, man. He, t he took a game that was just boring everybody to tears and, and rejuvenated everything just by having that that moment of greatness, and it was awesome. I don't I don't know what the what the TV version of that was, but there's just no way that that those guys had any semblance of fun with that at all. I guarantee it. They like they may have 
they may have chuckled a little bit like, oh, oh, oh fans out on the field, and he's running around and nobody's catching him, and oh, like they may have maybe like chuckled a little bit when the guards finally, you know, tackled him or whatever, but God, Kevin Harlan, like, like he did such a good job at painting that picture, like I felt like I, I felt like I knew what was going on, like, down to a T, like I could, I could see it happening in my head with that. And it was just funny, like they, you know, they laughed about it at the at the end, and and the, <laughs> the other part too, where he's like, "Man, that was like the most exciting thing that's happened in this whole game." <laughs> uh, I mean, he's definitely not going to sugarcoat it. You know, you know when a game is just is just fucking terrible, when it's just boring the living hell out of you. The, those are the moments that you're like, you're you're really happy when something like that happens. You're like, finally, something I can actually talk about that's gonna. You know, not make me want to just shove like a, you know, get well, I have myself be cut in half by a rusty shovel and have me die from rust buildup or something. Get out of here! Oh, it's close. But yeah, the other part that sucks too, since we're on the topic of football, is I totally lost my week one matchup, and I'm bummed out about it because the Cardinals defense totally let me down, man. I all I needed was them for was for them to just be good, like they were pretty much all of last season. And they're playing against the Patriots, for God's sake. They're playing against a Tom Brady and Rob gronkowski list Patriots team that was being headed by Jimmy Garoppolo, making his first start. And he goes and fucking lights him up. Are you serious? Like, going into that... Okay, going into that... Going into that matchup, I was down by, like, eight points. Like, I think I was down by, like, 12 points. And the only thing that I needed, I had two players left. I had Michael Floyd, and I had Cardinals defense. Matt, the only player he had left was Steven Goskowski, the, the Patriots kicker. I figured, I mean, if, if 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 these guys do what they're supposed to do, I'm going to be good to go. I mean, I should be able to get enough points from the two of these squads that I'll be able to overshadow what their kicker's doing. Despite the fact that Goskowski is, like, the easily the best fantasy kicker in, in all the land. But the point is is they totally fucked me over. And it was in a situation where Adrian Peterson had two points. So like I had an I had a golden opportunity. Like not a lot of not a lot of chances where, you know, you're gonna win a game when your opponent has, you know, his number one draft pick scoring two points. But no, Cardinals defense fell flat on their cocks and Michael Floyd had I think like 50 yards and just and I ended up I, and then Goskowski had like 15 points or something like that so I ended up losing by double digits totally sucks man also didn't help that my tight end had zero points <laughs> at Gary Barnage from Cleveland which uh you know I'm actually and I I know this is gonna make me sound like an asshole but I'm kind of relieved that that uh Robert Griffin the third got injured like I'm not happy that he got hurt because that's fucked up to say but I think, like, for my fantasy team, it's way better that he got injured because RG3's not exactly... Oh, get, o get over his head. Oh, yeah, look at that. All right. That is that is a nice uh, little RBI, RBI double there if he doesn't get thrown out. Um, but, yeah, it was... Um, what the hell was I saying? Oh, yeah, so he got hurt. He's going to be out for, like, eight weeks, which I think that he should just fucking retire at this point. Like, he's he's getting into that rarefied air of being like Tony Romo, where he's just injury-prone. Like, the guy can't get through a season anymore without hurting himself in a way that keeps him out for way too long. The guy just needs to hang it up. The guy is... His body is made out of, like, paper mache. He just, he just needs to let it go. He got hosed. Oh, boy. Go. Go! Oh no! Oh my God! <laughs> Why did he throw that? <laughs> oh, what an idiot! What a fucking dummy! I mean, I'm fine with it because it's whatever. Ooh, that was that was hilarious. That's okay. Anywho, so uh, yeah, so now they're gonna bring Josh McCown in. And I guess uh, all the experts are saying that Gary Barnage's uh, fantasy stock has gone way up because he actually did pretty well last season when McCown was throwing to him. So. I'm feeling pretty good about that. I gotta, I gotta bounce back from a bad week. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't, wasn't great. And so hopefully uh, things will be, will be good. So that's, that's what's happening. Oh no! There goes the shutout. 
Was it a shot? I didn't think it was even a shutout. It wasn't. I don't know. Is it 9-1 now? I think it's 9-1 now. It's definitely 9-1 now. Okay. Well, so much for Marv's ERA going down enough. I mean, it's going to go down a little bit because it's only one run, but that's going to go down maybe like .01 if anything, which is not enough. So, kind of bummed out about that. Realistically, should probably pull him in a moment. Oh, God. Oh, God. You gotta... Okay. Never seen a guy have to take so many steps <laughs> just, to, just to cover that amount of space. It's, it's just unacceptable. All right, Jack. So yeah, I just I, I I had to I had to let you guys hear that. That was just I, I I've been raving over that ever since ever since I knew that it existed. I saw I saw the call at like one this morning. I, I didn't listen to it live because I was actually watching the game on TV instead. But after I was done filming, you know my my nightly wave of videos, I was kind of perusing around on Twitter and uh, and I saw. A little uh, a little video clip of the game, and so I just I just figured it was going to be like a highlight or something. I didn't I wasn't even really reading I wasn't even really reading what was actually going on. Um, I didn't like see what the what the the pretext of what was going on was there, and I started listening. And I was like, oh, it's Kevin Harlan. I wonder it had to have been really good if they decide. Oh damn it! If they decided to play the radio call instead of the the TV one, and then I was like, oh, they're just talking about a. It's like, he's just talking about a streaker coming out. And I just started listening to it, and I was like, Oh my god, this is incredible! <laughs> this is great! And, uh, and then the rest was history. But, man, I love it. I love it. I love stuff like that. Like, it's always, it's always really cool to have, like, your... Your, your great, great plays, like Hail Marys to win games, and, and uh, you know, crazy, you know, interceptions or sacks, or just, like, great one-handed, twisty-in-the-air catches, or Hail, or, like, uh, you know, half-court Hail Marys that, that you totally, you know, that you totally drain it as, as the clock expires, and, but there's, it's always cool when you can have, like, weird moments like this that would normally never get any sort of anything, that it turns into kind of a, a marginally big deal. I, uh, so that's, yeah, that's that's my thing. Totally my, my thing. Come on, Peter! I just realized Peter was batting 687 for a pitcher. That is through almost 30 games. That is incredible. <laughs> I love it. Come on, boys. Let's uh, let's get through this inning and, 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 uh, and wrap this thing up, you know? I'm pretty good hands here. Nine, nine to one. I'm pretty sure we're not going to have a a insane meltdown like one would think. I think we're actually going to bring uh, we're going to bring in we're going to bring in uh, Marley. He's got some work to do too in bringing down the ERA since he's uh, he's kind of been a little home run happy lately. He's had a, a little bit of a bad track record of giving up too many too many runs. So hopefully this will be a situation where we can bring him down a notch. And what I'm going to try to do, I, I've kind of noticed that the pitches that are causing that to happen are pitches when I pitch to the opposite side, like this, and I throw I throw like a curveball coming in on him, and he'll just totally take it out. So I'm going to like I'm going to pitch these guys outside and see if maybe that helps, or maybe you know go inside like this on him instead. There we go. I'll totally take that instead. <laughs> It just seems like it seems like the percentage of guys hitting home runs goes up so much when I do that pitch where I pitch like across them going inside and they'll just totally tag the living hell out of it. And so uh yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna let it happen though. That is not what I was looking for at all. Alright. <laughs> that was weird. I didn't realize that just bunting with the bat straight out is going to get you a crazy pop fly strip for the pitcher. I think you actually have to bunt like this to really get a better one. Right on the plate. Alright. Or on the bag, I guess. It's not really the plate. <laughs> We're not playing baseball facing the fans. That'd be pretty crazy, actually. How weird would that be? I mean, technically you're still facing the fans in one direction, but imagine playing baseball where you have the entire outfield behind you, but you're hitting towards home plate into the fans that way. Man, how weird would that be? It, would, it doesn't make any sense that that would ever happen, but 
you know, whatever. I like to think of strange scenarios in which sports would take place, and that would certainly be a pretty weird one. Alright, here comes the strikeout. The gas face. Okay, maybe not. It's actually it's actually pretty tough to get strikeouts in this game, I I've come to to realize. It's it's not really easy to get them to kind of fall victim to it. Maybe maybe because I'm just throwing regular pitches all the time. Like, I'm not always throwing like the, the heavy fastballs, and I'm not throwing change-ups terribly often. I'm sure if I did that more, I'd probably help out my cause with that, but I mean I, I like having the ball in play. I think that it's more interesting that way. Alright, well. We have uh, notched this thing up. That that went over pretty well, I would say. No uh, no save there, but hey, we got a couple home runs on on the deal there. So why not? Yeah, 45k. Some of which is gonna go to a nose job for you, because that's still totally disgusting. Like they made these player models. How? Why in the hell did they make them look like that? <laughs> that's so weird to me. But whatever, whatever. Okay, so who's gonna be? I think what Harry's gonna be pitching next time, so we're gonna we're going to uh, yeah, we're gonna make his batting at least a little bit of something. We'll make it uh, that. There we go. All right, uh, and then let's go for let's see who's gonna be most deserving of it now, or who's, who's gonna need it the most now. Seven, six. Okay, well, he might need it for defense purposes, and that's what he's going to get it on. Okay. Alright, well that's pretty much going to take care of that, we're not going to have any money for anything else in this time, but hey, guess what? We are sitting at 28-0, we have two games left against the Ghastly Monsters, and then uh, from that point, my friends, we are going to move on to the next set of, of, uh, of games against the World Powers. So until then, my friends, this is your host, Lovely Cheese Pizza, saying thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care, everybody. The guy is drunk, but there he goes! <laughs>